Hey, how's it going guys? Phil here, and this is a review for the BenQ Trivola S Portable Electrostatic Bluetooth Speaker. BenQ is known to most as a video projector company, but they're following up on their first electrostatic Bluetooth speaker, the Trivolo, released in 2014, with this new, even smaller model, the Trivolo S. In the box, you will receive the speaker, a power adapter base, a US outlet plug, a microfiber drawstring bag, and a quick start manual. You'll need to first assemble the power adapter by sliding the swappable plug into the adapter base, making sure the tab end goes in first. It should click into place. The cord on the adapter is 5 feet long, and the connector is a standard micro USB. The speaker itself is pretty hefty, weighing in at 2 and a quarter pounds. It measures 6 inches by 3 and 3 quarter inches by 2 and a half inches thick when folded up. The sides of the speaker open up 90 degrees to review the amplifier panels to a full width of 8 and a half inches. On the bottom of the speaker is a rubber base at a slightly upward angle with four rounded corner feet, which isolate the speaker from table vibrations and keeps it from sliding around. On the back is the micro USB charging port and line in port. To charge the internal lithium ion battery, plug the adapter into the USB port. The LED light will be red while the speaker is charging. When the speaker is fully charged, the LED will shut off. Because the unit has an internal battery, it does not need to be plugged in to operate. On battery power, it can play continuously up to 18 hours depending on volume level. On the top of the speaker are the controls. There's an NFC pairing area at the top, play pause, mode, volume keys, Bluetooth pairing, and power button. Press and hold the power button for three seconds to turn the speaker on. Then press and hold the Bluetooth button to start Bluetooth pairing. On your device, connect to the Bluetooth device named Trivolo S. Alternately, you can use an NFC-enabled phone and place your device near the top of the controls to pair with the speaker. So what's the difference between an electrostatic speaker and a traditional electromagnetic speaker? Well, for one, the size. You'll notice that these speakers are super thin, only a quarter of an inch, which is only possible by using an ultra-thin film diaphragm, sandwiched between the metal grills which vibrate to generate sound. This technology allows the speaker to reproduce sound accurately and cleanly, with mid to high frequency ranges projecting uniformly across the entire surface of the speaker. As a result, the sound has minimal distortion and is very realistic and crisp sounding. Compared to the 10% distortion rate of traditional speakers, the distortion rate of these speakers is less than 1%. It also performs very well and remains balanced at lower volumes, perfect for listeners who want to add some music to quiet spaces, or just want to have some ambient noise in a relaxing environment. But don't be fooled, the speaker is able to produce louder volumes, certainly enough to fill a small room. Although you get great fidelity in the mid and upper ranges, since the displacement of the ultra-thin diaphragm is correspondingly small, electrostatic drivers often struggle to produce low frequencies, which is why you'll notice dual 12-watt subwoofers on the front and two low-frequency passive radiators on the sides behind the speaker panels to make up for that shortcoming and balance the sound from treble to bass. Because of the panel's flat design, the sound tends to focus directly in front of the speaker and at the height of the speaker, often described as beamy by critics of electrostatic speakers. But you can widen the soundstage by switching to 3D mode. Just press the mode key and the power LED will flash green about 7 times. Thank you. 
you'll hear a bit more depth and bass response and the sound isn't as flat. When exiting 3D mode, the LED will flash red. The other thing you'll notice projection-wise is that the sound from the speaker radiates from the front as well as the back of the panels. Though, if you're off to the sides, you'll notice a drop-off in sound. Which, while it does limit the amount of sidewall reflections that can muddy the sound quality, doesn't make for a great omnidirectional listening experience. There are three methods of input for the speaker. The first we already saw is Bluetooth. The second is auxiliary in, using the aux input on the back. And that lets you play from devices that might not have Bluetooth capability, but do have a headphone out port. The third method of input is actually the USB port, which you can connect to your computer or laptop via a standard micro USB cable, though one is not included. When multiple inputs are used, the speaker chooses them by highest priority, starting with USB, then aux in, followed by Bluetooth. The last feature I'll talk about here, but can't really show you, is the ability for the speaker to pair with a second Travolo S for true stereo playback. Now unfortunately I don't have a second Travolo S to show you how that works, but if you download the BenQ Audio app onto your smartphone, it'll walk you through how to pair the device to a second unit. Basically by pressing and holding the Bluetooth and mode or volume up keys together for 3 seconds, depending on which speaker you want to be the primary and which will be the secondary. The app will also let you monitor the battery life and toggle 3D mode on and off. However, none of these features require the app since you can perform them all with the physical buttons. For a small, portable Bluetooth speaker, I found the Travolo S has a beautiful design, decent volume range, and plenty of detail and fidelity, especially in the mid and upper ranges, making it great for vocal, classical, and instrumental music. But it lacks a deep bass response for folks who love heavy beats, club music, or who need louder volumes to fill larger spaces. Its built-in battery makes it suitable for travel, if you don't mind the extra weight, but the soundstage can be somewhat flat and narrow given the directional nature of its projection, and the fact that it needs to sit on a flat surface. But as long as you can set the speaker at the right height and point it directly at the listener, you'll find the listening experience to be quite pleasant and satisfying overall. I hope you enjoyed this review. You can ask me any questions in the comments. I'll put a link to the product in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and join me next time.